Cisco AnyConnect Remote Access VPN. We're going to use ICE, leveraging AD for authentication, and we'll have some authorization using a DACL or downloadable access control list. So we're here. We have VPN up and running with ASA. That's it. Um, and I'm just showing a quick connection. You know, so this is a very base config using the wizard, right? No magic here. And we connect and we get an inside IP address response, right? So we, we know we're connected and we can check that by doing a show VPN session DB any connect. And we get some good information here, right? Username, assigned IP, the group policy, etc. So we know VPN is working and what we want to do is move the authentication mechanism. We're going to use radius to authenticate um, to Active Directory, but ICE is going to perform that functionality and give authorization as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a group and we're going to call it VPN. And we're going to put it in the all device groups. And we're going to talk about why we're doing that in, in, a, in a quick second here. We'll go ahead and go to network devices and this is where we're going to add our um, ASA. Okay, in this case, that's what I'm using in this in this environment. So we'll give it a name. This could be VPN one. It could be the host name of the device, remote access VPN, um, whatever makes sense to you, and give it an IP address. Now I have 100 here. It's actually 199. I came back and fixed it, but um, but you give it an IP address. I'm going to add it to the device type VPN. And then I'm going to go ahead and configure radius, right? So Cisco one, two, three in my case, keep it simple and we'll submit. So now this device can actually send radius requests to identity services engine, right? So our ASA. Now you might have multiple ASAs that you would add in here. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to go into policies, policy elements, results, and we're going to create a downloadable ACL. So this is an ACL that will get pushed once logged in and in, enforced against that user. So we'll go ahead and give it a, a name. In this case, we're going to do VPN permit all and there will be a permit IP any any and you can do a quick check um, and then go ahead and, and submit. And finally, we're going to create an authorization profile. So think of a lot of these, these pieces that we're doing now as objects, right? We're building these out and we're going to use them in uh, policy um, later on. So we'll, go, we'll give this VPN permit all. You might want to call this auth Z or something like that. Um, the downloadable ACL at this point is um, assigned. And then you can see there's a bunch of elements here that we could add. We're going to come back to ASA VPN in a, a, a video that's coming up next around um, pushing the group policy to the user um, from ICE as well. Okay, so let's go to policy sets and we're gonna create a brand new policy set here for VPN. And I'm gonna keep this pretty simple, but I'll show you how quick it is to get this up and running. So VPN access, right, or VPN policy set, whatever the, the name that makes the most sense to you is, give it a name. And we'll go ahead and we'll go into the condition studio. And what we're gonna do is grab that device type of VPN, right? So we're gonna grab that that one device in my case, in your case, it might be many devices, right? We'll go ahead and select um, default network access. We could refine that to the protocols that are in use for, for that particular policy set. Um, we'll go ahead now and jump in and, and create the authentication policy. So right here, all we're gonna do is change this to Active Directory, okay? AD1 to authenticate. And I already created Active Directory integration in ICE, so that was already there, um, but that's fairly trivial. And then we'll go ahead and create the authorization policy. Okay, so we'll give it a name. In this case, maybe, you know, VPN ADHR. And we'll go ahead and specifically look for um, that external identity Active Directory and that group of HR. We'll go ahead and add that. So that's the condition. And if, if it matches, we will go ahead and give that VPN 
full access, right? Permit all. And we'll go ahead and save that out. Now, everything looks good on the ice side. Maybe what we can do is go to the live logs to get ready to do uh, analysis as we connect. But first, we have to go back to the ASA and make some changes, right? And the reason why we need to do that is is because we want now to say, instead of using um, the local authentication, right? I want to now go ahead and use ICE and, and leverage the RADIUS protocol. So we'll go ahead and create the AA server groups and we're going to call this ICE. And we're going to go ahead here and add the actual IP address of the ICE node itself. So in my case, the interface is, is inside. Um, it could be management uh, on your side. Here, I'm going to go ahead and give that IP address, and this should be 199. And the secret key of one Cisco 123. And go ahead and save that out or hit OK. And we can do a test from here if we wanted to. I'm not going to do that now. I'm actually going to go jump right in once we assign this to either a group policy or a connection profile. Um, once I do that, I'm going to just jump in and test it. So we'll drop the, um, the AA server group. We'll move it to ICE. We won't make any other changes here. We'll hit, hit OK and apply. And I think we're ready to test. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to our box here. We're going to VPN as HR1. We'll go ahead and hit OK. It's trying to connect. Looks like it's connected. Perfect. Okay, so we know we've connected, but what we need to do is validate that we actually connected with ICE. And look at that. We can see the ICE logs here. Very quickly, if I pivot into uh, one of them, I can see the downloadable ACL here and the reference name that it's called. You can also see it's permit IP any any. Um, and then um, I can go ahead and do show VPN session DB uh, any connect. Let's see what's showing up here. And we can see, you know, HR1 assigned IP address. We can also see the group policy and we're using the default group policy. Again, the next video, I'm going to show you how to push the right group policy based on the user that's connecting. There's that ACL that was pushed down. And if we uh, move this over a little bit and, and reference the ACL that's called there, we can see that. Now we could see that in the log or in that detailed log as well. So pretty easy to get, you know, Cisco AnyConnect integrated with Identity Services Engine.